I'm sure you've at least seen an MMO out there. You've got your Warcrafts, your RuneScapes, your Fallout 76s, your Final Fantasy 14s, but what if I told you that you have simply not lived until you've experienced the ultimate MMO? This is a game where murderous automatons roam the street. A game where every citizen in the world has decided to take a stand to fight to protect their homes. The MMO to end all MMOs. That's right, today we are talking about... Toontown Online. Uh -huh. Hey there guys, if you like this video, please make sure to watch through the entire thing, and also subscribe and click the bell if you really, really liked it, I guess. Also, don't forget to check out the game down in the description because it's free to play and it's really fun. And it's not like the bad kind of free to play, it's like the really free free to play. So, uh... Hello everybody, I'm Garrulous64, and I hope you're ready to learn about one of the most amazing and also inherently flawed games of all time, Toontown Online. Toontown is what we call an MMO, which stands for Massively Multiplayer Online, at least last time I checked. Don't worry if you didn't know that, I'm pretty bad with slang too. Unlike most MMOs, or at least the two that I've decided to, you know, put up on the screen today, that take their elements from fantasy, Toontown instead opts to take its inspiration from cartoons, and more specifically, the Mickey Mouse universe. The mouse was just really into RPGs back then, and I mean, I'm sure glad he was, because otherwise we wouldn't have either of these things. And don't you worry, I will be talking about that at some point, because I have a lot to say. The original Toontown ran from 2003 to 2013, apparently, which I actually had no idea, because if I had to guesstimate, I think I was playing it around 2005. And let me tell you, this game was one of the coolest things in the world, because if you were a member, you would get this cool newsletter every single month that had, like, notes from the game developers, you would get little, like, trading cards and posters, and you could also go anywhere in the game, whereas if you weren't a member, you were stuck in Toontown Central forever, fighting the same, like, four types of cogs, and it was very, very sad. Basically what I'm saying is I should have never traded my Toontown membership for a Club Penguin membership, because let me tell you, that was a direct downgrade. <laughs> no offense to Club Penguin, but I like killing robots! You can't do that in Club Penguin! First things first, it's time to make an OC, because you can't walk around Toontown as a human, you'll melt! After you've created your incorrectly colored animal, you're thrown into a quick tutorial where you learn about the evil cogs, and then... Nope. After you design your incorrectly colored animal, you're dropped into a quick tutorial where you learn about the evil cogs who are threatening to turn the entirety of the Toon world into a corporate graveyard devoid of life and magic. And now I'm thinking that Disney might have shut this game down because maybe this was getting to be a little bit too realistic. Speaking of Mickey and his friends though, you'll see their faces plastered all around this game, but you know, I don't really see them doing a whole lot to help the situation. Like, I don't know, Flippy's supposed to be the mayor of this place? I guess Mickey's more like a... Emperor Palpatine? Ha <laughs> ha! There is no mercy! Thankfully for the tunes, they're able to fight back by using gags, which are references to classic cartoon... gags. That's where the name comes from. Out there on the street, you can catch this man throwing hands and throwing pies, shooting bad guys with a squirting flower, electrocuting... Robots with a taser- that's a, that's an actual weapon. That's not cartoony at all. I don't- is this an actual assault I'm putting on YouTube? But most of them are goofy. It's fine. I mean, like, I might cave this robot's head in with an anvil and watch as he falls to his knees and the life leaves his circuits, but like, it's not like I enjoy it or anything. It's like, but this is war. Like, it's a necessary evil. As you use your gags in battle, you will gain XP, and eventually you will level up these attacks, and you'll get even stronger as the game goes on. Now this is what it's all about, fellas, because once you get these new attacks, Sure, you can't carry as many of them, but they do a lot more damage and they actually get you more XP if you're able to use them in battle. So, after going back to the gag shop, you gotta make sure you configure your loadout in such a way that you don't start running out of things, but you're also able to do massive damage, and it becomes this really nice game of managing your inventory on top of a fun turn-based combat system. And you know, I actually feel like a little bit of a hypocrite, because in Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, I was wearing this shirt by complete coincidence, by the way, I hate that you have, like, inventory that you need to manage, and, like, your attacks are one use, or something like Sticker Star, like, <laughs> that game. But this game, I'm totally fine with it, and I don't know why. You just gotta keep in mind, though, that all these gags cost money, so if you don't have the beans to pay for that... ...cup of water, the shopkeepers aren't gonna care if you're dying in the streets, so you better watch out. That's where the trolley comes in. You can ride it either alone or with friends, and once you play these little mini-games, you're able to get jelly beans to feed back into the economy like a good little sheep. I am running on fumes right now, and I don't know if this is a joke about the cartoon government or the real government, but either way, I think we can all agree we're getting paid in jelly beans out here. 
The game isn't all about combat though, because right from the start of the game, they'll have you doing tune tasks. Tune tasks are basically anything that any living creature in this universe might have you do, like retrieving something from the cogs by force of course, or just running back and forth between two buildings like you got nothing better to do. Once you complete these tasks, your reward will follow, which would usually be jelly beans, or like a laugh boost, which is a health upgrade, or you can even get the most important thing in the game, a gag track. You see, if you want to have more than just throw and squirt gags, you're gonna need to be doing a lot of tasks to collect every single frame of animation for that new gag track you're working on. Throughout your playthrough of this game, you'll pick up six of the seven gag tracks that you see here, so you gotta choose wisely but that also means that you'll be doing a ludicrous amount of tasks for that talking dog you met inside the Arby's on Loopy Lane. This is, I believe, Toontown's biggest flaw, and it always has been, because, you know, on the surface, it's this fun, brightly colored RPG that you can play with your friends, and there's tons of places to go to and explore, and Mickey Mouse is your friend. But, like, when you get into the gameplay, I really can't stick to the general mission structure of this thing for more than an hour, because it's so tedious. Obviously, it wasn't a problem when I was a kid, because, like, what else did I have to worry about aside from debilitating autoimmune illness? I mean, like, Toontown obviously took precedent, because why the hell would I think about anything else? Anyway, what you've been seeing in the background so far has been footage of Toontown Rewritten, which is a fan revival of the original game that seeks to make it pretty much exactly how it was back in the day with some very nice quality of life improvements. The biggest of which, of course, is actually being able to play the game because, you know, the original got axed by the mouse years ago. This is probably the game you're most familiar with because it was a huge deal when it came out, and I think it still is because there's still a whole lot of tunes running around this place when I made a new account to check things out. But if you're like me, and you want to play something that's like Toontown, except with a ton of new extra features and, you know, things that really spice up the original gameplay, Toontown Corporate Clash is where you want to be. So the biggest change that this game brings is, uh, uh, everything. The entire game has been shaken up to an extreme degree to give both new players and veterans something fun to do, no matter what activity you choose. Most importantly, I think, is the mission structure of the game has been entirely changed, and there have been a whole bunch of new additions. Now, there is basically just one task line where you go from beginning to end in each neighborhood, and you don't need to worry about collecting all those gag tracks because that is also a thing that's been improved. But don't you think that those side tasks are gone because now they're filtered into an entire separate category of... side tasks. Finishing those lets you get stuff like cosmetic items and also laugh boosts, which are pretty important and it also means, you know, you don't need to grab them if you don't want to. So going through the main route obviously means you have less laugh points to work with, right? No, you're wrong, because you see, every task actually gives you experience points, and that feeds into the new level up system where when you level up, you get laugh points, like a real RPG, can you believe it? I mean, what's an RPG without an experience system? STICKER st Sorry, I still get a little heated about that game because it is one of the most frustrating things in existence. But other than that, you can basically do whatever you want in this game. Fishing, trolley games, mini golf, racing, fishing, I already said that, and you get experience points for those things individually. So you can just start getting laugh bonuses all over the place doing your favorite tasks, and I think that is a really great way to expand the amount of things that you want to do in this game versus the amount of things that the original game had that you could do to distract yourself from how boring the main game was. Another huge improvement to this game is how the gag training works. Instead of starting with throw and squirt like in the original game, you're allowed to pick whichever two tracks you want. So for instance, you could pick the squirt gags and the new zap gags that end up working in tandem to ensure you hitting the target and dealing extra damage, or you could be a huge masochist and start with Tune Up and Lure and be purely a support tune until you level up to get another track. As you level up with battle experience, you'll gain skill points that you can purchase new gag tracks with. It costs two skill points to get a new gag entirely, and it costs one to prestige a gag that you already have. Basically what prestige does is it adds extra features to something you already have. So like Squirt, for example, if you prestige that, it will soak the two cogs to the left and right of your target, thus allowing Zap to travel along all three of them and deal massive damage to a group. Meanwhile, things like Prestige Tune-Up allow you to heal yourself as well as the team member you're healing, which actually allows you to survive a little bit longer if you're the only healer in the group, which is what my role was for a little while, but thankfully, we're kicking butt now, so we have like three healers. Yeah, you can catch us never dying ever, except when I, I do die pretty frequently. <laughs> This game is a little difficult sometimes, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Putting all this stuff together, it allows for some new meta in this game, and also a lot of fun strategy, but it also makes you a lot more viable in battle on your own. I mean, 
Look at the Wombologist over there, caving in heads like it's nobody's business. I mean, he's a man of science and efficiency. And he didn't think that was enough so far. Corporate Clash also adds new neighborhoods to the game, like Ye Old Toontown, me. There's an E at the end, I don't know how to put it. And also Acorn Acres, which was in the original, but was not its own neighborhood. It was just a mini game hub. So now Chip and Dale actually don't exist here because, you know, all of the Disney characters just got thanos It was really, I don't know, he went rogue. Unfortunately, as much as these things spice up the game and make it more enjoyable, the main quest line is still a bit tedious, and by the time we got to Daffodil Gardens, my friends and I just decided to start farming XP on the days where it was doubled, and also we started to storm in the COG headquarters because these dungeons are hella fun. This is where I think the game shines brightest, honestly, because it's you and three friends running through these halls, destroying the COGs in their own home turf, and this also gets you a ton of XP if you survive to the end, and it also lets you access the big raid battles that I didn't have footage of when I was writing the script, but I do now, so you can suck it, me from the past writing the script. Get out of here! I need that to read the rest of the script. But anyway, my friends and I have been through Cellbot HQ like a million times just because we've got it down to a science at this point, and I actually unintentionally got caught up in a cashbot raid while I was recording for this, and that thing was crazy. I've never actually seen the inside of that one before, and I kind of got stomped a little bit, but we made it out on top except for those people that crashed and lost all the experience in the final battle. Uh, I do feel bad for them, but also, I got the XP, so, you know what, I'm sleeping fine tonight. And finally, the last thing I'm going to talk about here, the Corporate Clash team also has added an entire new COG faction to this game in the form of board bots. So now, if you didn't think four different factions was enough, there's five, and that's one more than there used to be. Oh, and you know, there's also that little detail where they're going back and recreating the old models for some of the COGS to make them a little bit more modern, and the designs are still perfect, and it's literal perfection. Look at this one that Andrew will pick out of the footage, and I don't actually know what I'm pointing at. And okay, I lied. There's one more thing I want to compliment, and that's actually the community. The people that play this game are all super nice and welcoming, and in a game about teamwork, that is really, really important. Because let's say... This game was remade as a solo game. It would be really, really boring and quiet around. So, you know, just run around the town, make friends with people, do COG battles, do raids, do anything you want. This game is incredible, and I really, really hope that I see some of you guys running around Toontown at some point. If you do see me, that's me, do say hello. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this look at one of my old favorite games, which is... Also, coincidentally, still one of my favorite games, as you could tell. But, uh, yeah, if you check this game out, I guess I'll be seeing you on the streets. That sounded a lot more threatening than I meant it to sound. Like, I mean, the streets look like this. That wasn't a threat, I promise. Now, if there's anyone down there in the comments asking about Sonic the Hedgehog, you can tell them that this is basically a Sonic game because these characters also wear gloves. You made it to the end of the video, though! Welcome to the end, where I tell you that if you made it this far, you should definitely leave a comment down below because you're in the secret club now for making it all the way here. And if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Toontown and other things that aren't Toontown because I do a lot of things. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters who are Chaotic Mercenary, Brady Hilkemeyer, Jaden the Hedgehog, Mailman019, Kaido the Samurai, Danny Lee Dauber, Mike TGC, Dex, T-Bone APH, The Seven Superstars, Crystal, Ty Little Tech Guy, PM13, Chaos, J Remy, Dork in the Hat, Mega Traffic Cone, and on Patreon we have John the Real Wawa Luigi. Also, thank you to everyone who's supporting in the $1 tiers. That helps a whole bunch, even if it is just a dollar, because, you know, that builds up over time. If you become a supporter, you get access to the special Discord channel where we all chat and talk about special things upcoming on the channel and just stuff in general. And it's a fun time. You also get access to a whole bunch of members-only videos. I think there's like 30 or something in there. And you can just watch them all for a dollar. It's pretty cool. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.